what message would you have for those people who are in the same situation as you were in? What would you tell them? Well, I, I think I would tell them the same thing I was trying to tell my girl the other day, which is don't be blind. Take your blindfolds off. Okay, so Brother David, I received your email that uh, you are learning about Islam and you want to you know, embrace Islam. Tell me about yourself. As far as religion goes and everything as a kid, <clears throat> going to church and everything, it was part of you know, the norm. And, but I always, as far as I can remember, I've always had questions about certain things you know, in the Christianity and everything. And, and you know, grown, grown-ups not having all the answers like you know, most of us don't. They would, they would try to answer as much as they could, but it would get to the point where I would keep asking because I would still be kind of like, well, you know, a lot of things didn't make sense to me, but their, their answer to that would always be like, you know, you know, you can't doubt. It's, it's basically like, this is what it is and you just got to have faith. And, and a lot of that, like, <clears throat> I understand because obviously <laughs> we don't see God, you know, but as far as the whole story from the beginning and, and everything that you kind of learn as you grow, you know, a lot of those things would always seem kind of questionable and like, you know, you don't want to even, you don't want to even ask about it too much because it almost makes you feel guilty to do that because of, you know, because of how they tell you that things are and you shouldn't doubt. And, you know, if you go outside of the, our beliefs, then it's almost as if we're committing a sin, trying to look for answers. But, um, you know, I've always been, I mean, I've met a lot of people like in the Muslim faith and uh, I was uh, actually in the military myself and, and as a contractor also, I was able to work with uh, a lot of uh, Afghani locals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I was always driven by how they would carry themselves and 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 they seem to be humble and peaceful people and 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 also you know with my daughter she also met a friend that happened to be muslim too and and you know i've always met the muslim that i've always met it was nothing like how they portray the faith to be in the news and and with all the terrorism and everything like that so you know i always had a, like a soft spot to the people of the Islam faith because of because I, I got to meet a lot of them and it didn't sit well what they talk about in the news and everything like that so you know and with my with my doubts and and questions that I've had in the Christianity you know I've always wanted to learn more about Islam and and I was able through my searching and and YouTube and videos I bumped it into one of your videos and and it seemed like interesting how you was breaking it down and making it easier for us to understand us that weren't too familiar with the with the faith itself so i've been you know going through the videos and watching a lot of them and and, and a lot of things that you've said make sense to me and and you know it kind of like it may you know because it kind of i want to be deep in the faith and, and be able to get close to god and but by going to church and, and the, my doubts in the back of my mind, it's kind of like, I think it's not allowed me to fully embrace what they've been telling me and fully just blind faith and just go all out because a lot of things had not made sense to me. And I think that because of that is what stopped me from, you know, becoming a closer man to God and being able to do things better because I feel like, my doubts in my back of my mind have stopped me from surrendering fully. And, and by watching your videos and, and kind of like a lot of things that you said, kind of like, you know what, that makes more sense to me. And, and, you know, so it, it's something that as so far makes sense to me. And, 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 I, and I feel at peace. It makes me eager to want to learn more because so far I feel like I'm getting the answers that I've been always wanting. So I'm just curious, Brother David, what, which video were you watching of mine? Wow, I've watched 
a bunch of them, really, to be honest with okay. you. Uh, one, the last one I think I was watching was uh, about the the man that was trying to ban Islam. And yes. I was looking at that and his story and, you know, how it all turned around. And just pretty much a lot of, a few of the Christians that have uh, converted or to Islam from Catholics specifically and 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 you know in your whole like classroom type of of teaching that you've done with a lot of people that are there and asking questions a lot of the questions that I've I've already had myself so you know it's just it's been a few to be honest okay all right wonderful um, it makes me glad to hear that that God is making uh, me as a vehicle to share Islam with you and the rest of the people and we hope and pray that may God accept it from all of us and help us to enlighten more people with the message of Islam, the message of peace, the message of submission to the creator. So brother David, looks like mashallah, God willing that you have um, did a lot of research. Where do you want me to start? Should I explain to you the basics of Islam or should I jump into who was Muhammad, peace be upon him? It's a know about Muhammad, you know, um... So really briefly, what is Islam all about? And then I will come to Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? As you may have seen from my videos, from other videos, when we say God, his name is Allah, we say that he is the God of all the humans, the whole creation. He's not just the God of the Muslims, the God of the Arabs. He's the God of everyone. In different languages, God may have different names. Like in Hebrew language, it is Elohim or Jehovah. Yahweh, you know, Spanish, it is Dios, right? Are you from the Hispanic background, Brother David? Yes, sir. Yeah, so it is Dios, right? In Spanish language. English, it is the creator. In Aramaic language, the language of Jesus, it is Ilah, Allah. And in Arabic language, the same creator, his name is Allah. Not a different God, the same creator. So that's important, that he's a universal God, not a separate God, but God of all of us. Secondly, God, Allah loves all of humanity. So to love all of humanity, God wants to guide all of humanity because he's a loving God. He wants to guide, you know, just like a loving parent like yourself. You want the best from your daughter, from your children, from your nephews and nieces, perhaps. In the same way, God wants the best from us. And he gave those instructions starting from the very first human, Adam that worship only one God. Do not worship idols and the humans and the creation and the sun, the moon, the plants, the trees. Only worship one God and obey God's guidance. That's the way for salvation. So in that way, God appointed many, many prophets and the messengers to nations of the past and people of, of the past. And God mentions about it in the Quran, chapter 16, verse number 36, that he appointed prophets and messengers and their message was to invite people to only worship one God, not to worship false gods and the creation, but only submit to one God. So that submission to one God, brother David, is Islam. So Islam is not a new faith. It was not started by Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's not a seventh century faith. Islam is the first and the only faith that God has given as a guidance to humanity, starting from the very first human. And all the prophets that you may know from your background, you know, Solomon and David, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, uh, Abraham, peace be upon all of them. All of them, they came to preach Islam, to invite people to submit only to one God, not submitting to humans in worship, animals and creation, but only one God. So in that sense, we say that Islam was the faith of Abraham and Jesus and Moses, peace be upon them. If that was their faith, that means they are Muslims. So Muslim is a person who submits to one God wholeheartedly without any compulsion. So we say that Jesus and Moses were Muslims. Abraham was a Muslim. In fact, the Quran says about him, chapter three, verse number 67, that Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he was an upright person. He was a Muslim. So when you convert, when you revert to Islam, you're not coming to a new faith created by Muhammad, peace be upon him. No, you're coming to the faith that was given by God to all the prophets. So what happened in history, Brother David, is some people, they moved away from the right faith. The law is there, but not every person believes in it. Well, they believe in it, but they don't obey it. In the same way, not every person of those different communities 
they followed Islam, some moved away some people, and they formed their own faiths. Some people they started to worship the sun and the moon, they have they created their own faith. Some people took idols as mediators and as gods, and they created Hinduism. Some people created Buddhism. And some people, they elevated a man, a human, a prophet, Jesus, peace be upon him, created a new faith around Jesus, not around God, but around Jesus. And that faith is Catholicism or Christianity, as we say. But God, time after time, to people, different communities in the past, he appointed these messengers and prophets to bring these people back again from their man-made faiths to the God-given faith, which is Islam. So in that context, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was appointed by God as the last and the final messenger to all of humanity. Not just to the Arabs or the Muslims, he came as a messenger, universal messenger to all of humanity. And his message was exactly the same message that Jesus brought. That means submit only to one God. Do not worship humans and idols and creation, but only submit to one God. So that is where Muhammad, peace be upon him, comes into play now. The Quran mentions that he is the best example for us to follow in chapter 33, verse number 21, that in the person of Muhammad, peace be upon him, you have the best example for us to follow for those who believe in Allah in the last day and remembers Allah much. See, the previous prophets who came, Brother David, they came for their own communities. Like Jesus, peace be upon him. He said that I came for the lost sheep of Israel. Abraham came for specific location, specific people and community. So their, their mission was not a universal mission. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, he, he was appointed as the last and the final messenger with the universal mission to invite all of humanity to submit to the creator so humanity can prosper and by God's mercy, they can be placed into paradise. Now, a brief history about life of Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was born in Arabia, in the city of Mecca, in the year 570 CE. So at that time, after Jesus was gone, so Jesus' message was Islam. But people deviated from that message. They, they took Jesus to be as God instead of, of the true God, or along with the true God. Idol worship was all over the world. The world was in a state of darkness. So that's when God again appointed a light in the person of Muhammad, peace be upon him. So as he was growing up, Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Arabia, in Mecca, he was the most uh, credible person. He was the most trustworthy person to such a degree that as he was a young person, people gave him the name as the most truthful and the most honest person, a sadiq and a lameen in Arabic. At the age of 40, God sent angel Gabriel. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was meditating in the cave. So angel Gabriel was appointed by God. And then angel Gabriel brought the first revelations from God to Muhammad, peace be upon him. In the next 23 years, revelation of the Quran came by God in bits and pieces. Maybe one chapter or a few verses, some other chapter, right? So Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to memorize it, he used to implement it, and he used to share those revelations with his people. So they can implement and they can benefit, and they propagated them to outside of Arabia. So he preached in the city of Mecca for about 13 years, inviting people to give up idol worship, to only worship one God. He was sharing the guidance of God, the solutions for humanity. A few people accepted it, but many people, they did not. So those people who were idol worshippers, who rejected the faith of Islam and the guidance of God, they came to torture him and his companions, such a degree that they came to assassinate him. At that point, God instructed Muhammad, peace be upon him, to travel to a nearby city of Medina. They moved to Medina and they formed the Islamic society. They were ruling by the guidance of God. But looking at that, Many people around the nation, when they saw the peace and prosperity and intercontent of the people, solutions to humanity, poverty was eradicated, disparity was not there between the wealth, wealthy people and the poor people. Racial equality was brought by Muhammad, peace be upon him. Women were uplifted, equal to men in the eyes of God, never done before. 
So looking at all of these, people started to one by one, out of their own will and choice, they started to embrace Islam. Pretty soon, the whole of Arabia, they embraced Islam. And then people took the message to Africa, to Spain, to Europe, Russia, China, Indonesia, India, Pakistan, Malaysia, right? Of their own choice, people started to convert because people were realizing two things. First and foremost, they had questions, means the non-Muslims, just like you're having questions, who is the creator? Can he be three in one? Doesn't make sense. Or is he one in one, the way that Moses, Jesus, Abraham used to preach? So as they're finding answers in the Quran, in Islam, it is connecting in their hearts and in their minds. They're embracing Islam. Second thing, Brother David, is as people are having problems, even now and also that time, racial disparity, breakdown of the family structure, homicides and suicides, gambling and drug abuse, as people were finding themselves you know, surrounded by these uh, problems, when they looked into Islam, in the Quran, in the person of Muhammad, peace be upon him, they found out that Islam gave complete, comprehensive, beneficial solutions, which are working solutions, not just on the paper. These solutions, they work. When they looked into it, they found out, you know, Islam is for us. And by literally billions and millions and thousands, people started to embrace the faith of Islam. So even now today, Brother David, you'll be amazed to find out that Islam is the fastest growing faith in the Latino communities. It is the fastest growing faith. I mean, I have many Latino friends, Hispanic friends, brothers and sisters. They were Catholics. And now as they were asking questions, just like you're asking questions, who is the creator? Is there a higher purpose? What will happen in the Hera? They are finding answers in the Quran. Who was Jesus? Islam gives the perfect answer. He was a human. He was a prophet. His miracles were done, not by him, but God was doing those miracles through him to show people that he's a special man, just like Moses and, and Abraham did miracles. So when people were looking at this wonderful guidance, people were coming into Islam, even in the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him. So he, not only he brought the message, Brother David, he also implemented the message, the guidance of the Quran on himself, his family in the society. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, he preached for 23 years from the time he received revelation until he passed away. So the whole Quran was memorized by him and his companions, some of them, and it was transmitted like this in memory, generation after generation. So now today, you'll be amazed to find out that there are 10 million Muslims all over the world who memorize the whole Quran. And then we have the manuscripts coming from that time to our time. And lastly, Brother David is, and then let's have any discussion, is that this life is not the only life. One day we all have to pass away. Only Allah, God knows the time, the day, the place. However, Islam says that after we die, we will stand in front of God. God will bring us back to life. There would be a day of resurrection, a day of judgment. You know, just like when we, when we are at work, some assignment is given and will be evaluated based upon have we completed that assignment. You know, there's an evaluation on three months, six months yearly basis. There would be a grand judgment evaluation of all of us individually in front of God. And God would be judging us based upon two things. How did we live? The, who did we believe in? And what kind of deeds that we have done? So if you believed only in one God, submitted to him, embraced Islam, follow God's guidance. If he fell short any time, we repented to God. No one has to die for us. Why would somebody die for us? Directly repenting to God. And God says he can forgive any sin that we have. As long as we are sincere. No mediator, no one dies. God is a forgiving God. He's a merciful God. He's a loving God. So this is a complete package, Brother David. You know, the questions that you may have be having, other people may be having. Islam has the perfect answers and the solutions because Islam is not a faith made by humans. It's given by God. So we can prosper, so God can give us paradise. And that is what Islam is all about. Yes, yes. Um, what is, because uh, I've, I've heard, um, um, maybe um, there's a misconception, right? As far as the, like 
my what I would like as far as my household is for maybe one day for all of us to be able to be on the same page when it comes to the faith and, and you know how we choose to follow God, right? But um let's say for for whatever reason I'm not able to accomplish that. Mm-hmm. How how should that work or would it work in my household like for example with my girl wife or a significant other if if they was to choose to just stay blind for example and and, and not really wanting to find out more and and you know what i mean like they would just be stubborn and just comfortable with where they're at as far as moving forward in in my life you know how would that impact the relationship or or how would for example allah vis- visualize that situation at home okay. when when we're separated in our faith so first and foremost our gps system should always be what allah god wants from us we should be always asking the question you know what this is my situation what is the god's guidance in that situation so what allah god says in the quran is chapter 16 verse number 125 invite all to the way of allah to god with wisdom and good preaching good interactions and convey to them the mo- in ways which are the best the most gracious so from your side you have to be the best submitter the best muslim the best human the best person in the eyes of god to be the best is not enough for you to pray only five times a day or fasting and pilgrimage to be the best in front of god it means you become a better husband a better father a better neighbor a better human so when people when they see that you know david has now become a better person what could be the reason for it so they may automatically they may become curious and they may ask you questions and also study islam So first and foremost it starts with you. Secondly it's important that verbally you also need to convey to them what Islam is not just by your actions but also verbally. Because I say this to you know other new muslim brothers and sisters that if you love your family your wife your daughter your you know neighbors and your relatives you want them to be in the same place in paradise as you want to be. what is good for you is also good for all of humanity that means for the love of your parents your your family you want to convey to them the message and if they embrace the faith it's good ideally it's the best thing that yourself your wife your daughter and every family member is following the same faith ideally right ideally that's the hope and wish and pray in case if they don't follow it is between them and the creator responding to their questions with a smile with empathy with compassion with kindness in case if they follow it you know it's good for them good for you good for all of us in case if they don't you should still be the best father the best husband the best family member and then keep on praying to god keep on you know helping them assisting them to understand what islam is if they don't follow we should pray for them it is allah who gives guidance it is allah who changes the hearts of a person not you not me not even muhammad peace be upon him you know muhammad peace be upon him as his father passed away and then later his mother passed away when he was only 6 years of age so he was literally an orphan his uncle you know took care of him for many many years many decades that uncle did not die as a muslim even though muhammad peace be upon him conveyed to him the message the uncle saw the miracles he saw the best person in humanity even then the uncle did not embrace islam and the prophet was not happy but what can the prophet do it's not up to him it is up to allah we try our best we be the best we say the best and if they convert it's up to them right it would be the best for them and i have seen brother david that many a families that once a husband converts you know sometimes most of the time the wife also converts because now she knows what islam is before she only had you know some media propagating false information now she knows she she sees you pray she sees that you have given up drinking and gambling and intoxicants and smoking as she sees a better person in you 
automatically, I have seen many, many times, people also study it and they also convert. So do the best, inshallah, pray the best. I'm going to also pray. I'm going to request everyone to pray for you, your family, your wife, your parents. What about your parents, Brother David? Yeah, my, my mom is a Seventh-day Adventist which is a, you know, I guess a branch of the Christian, you know, as well. Um, and my stepdad also is, you know, they, they both uh, Seventh-day Adventist Christians, okay. you know, yeah. So, yeah, so, but my mom, you know, she is, you know, she is strong in her faith and everything, but she's also, she's acknowledged at least that, for a very long time that she knows about me and my questions and doubts. So, you know what I mean? Like, like with my questions, I believe that she has, she has, I'm pretty sure she, I have raised questions in her, you know, maybe by me asking her a question, she might feel like, you know what? I don't know the answer, but it, that is a very good question, mm -hmm. but you know, but she, you know, just like a lot of Christians and everything that you rather just stick to the whole blind faith and, and leave it alone. It's just more comfortable and easier just to do, to do that, you know, instead of, you know, which is, I feel like it shouldn't be that way because I feel like every adult should have the, you know, the curiosity to really want to know the, the truth, in, in my opinion, you know. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people are just comfortable where they're at and they, they don't, they rather not even acknowledge anything else. I know this is so unfortunate because people are so busy with their lives, with, you know, sports sometimes, politics, chasing after money, women, all of that. People are so busy sometimes. They don't take a pause and they reflect, you know what, am I believing the right belief? Is and there something rather, better? If I have these questions, maybe somebody, some, some faith may have answers. Is there a higher purpose to life? Who is the creator? What will happen in the hereafter? Every single thinking human should ask these questions. You know, um, um, by talking to my girl the other day, like I was trying to tell you about, you know, kind of like me wanting her to at least be open-minded about everything. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I had a... I was trying to tell her about the open, uh, being open-minded a little bit and everything, and, and and she would always come back into, which a lot of people think the same way. I know you were saying that um, Islam has been in in United States for for many years, right? But a lot of people they didn't even know that though. A lot of people, you know, in, in our about the religion, it wasn't until the bad things happen that all of a sudden now everybody is starting to hear about it right a little more than before so it's like they they see it as a foreign religion like you know what like we're not from there kind of thing like we're not from that culture like you know we don't speak that language or we don't come from where they come from it's kind of like they see it as foreign and to a point where they they, they think that they actually would be praising a different god or something like you know like because they don't know and, and there's and, and they, the only thing they do know is what they've seen on tv because before that you know a lot of people didn't even know about islam in general you know what i mean at least from where i'm from where i come from it wasn't something that you would see a lot and when we did start to see it it was in a negative way with this with the news and everything so a lot of people would just be like they rather just stay where they're at and, and if Islam was to come in the topic, they would see it as something foreign and something that, you know, we're not that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Right. You know, so for that reason, my desire from you, Brother David, is now you become an ambassador of peace and Islam to your people. All right. Yes, sir. Because that's it. that is how we can enlighten the people. Because for the love of your community, you want to share with them what Islam is and the reality. That Islam is not a foreign faith, the Arab faith, right? It's, a, it's not a cultural thing. Islam is an American faith. It's a human faith. It's for all the humans. So I know many Hispanic Muslim brothers and sisters. 
they be, they converted to islam reverted to islam now they became scholars of islam now they're sharing the faith they became the prominent scholars and i desire from you also brother david so by speaking to you i know in your heart you're already a muslim brother david so the important next step for you would be formally embracing the faith because all throughout your life in the future you can keep on learning keep on practicing keep on. the most important step is that you formally embrace the faith and then you keep on learning more as you go by because as long as you are you understand and you acknowledge that there is only one god and that muhammad peace be upon him is his messenger quran is the final book there is a reality in the hereafter we have to meet god we'll be questioned by god so as long as you understand these four concepts the rest of it for example how to pray when to pray how to fast you know how to fulfill other obligations we will teach you we will provide you the resources through the mentorship in the mosque and on the online classes they will help you inshallah so you can keep on learning and practicing as you move along because i myself even though i'm born and raised as a muslim in the muslim family every single day i also keep on learning so learning will not stop and learning uh, just because you don't know many aspect of islam should not stop you from formally embracing and then you keep on learning more as you move along make sense brother david yes sir all right uh, are you ready to take the best step of your life i'm ready i'm ready okay alhamdulillah alhamdulillah right all right are you ready for the best step of your life i'm ready okay brother david first let us first recite the testimony of faith in english so you would understand all right and then we will do for the sake of formality in arabic all right so please repeat after me i bear witness i bear witness that there is no other god that there is no other god besides one god allah besides one god allah and i bear witness and i bear witness that muhammad that muhammad peace be upon him peace be upon him is the messenger of allah is the messenger of allah and i bear witness and i bear witness that jesus was a messenger of allah that jesus was the messenger of allah all right congratulations my dear brother let's do the same in arabic brother david i will do it nice and slow i want you to please repeat after me inshallah ashhadu ashhadu allah allah ilaha ilaha illallah illallah wa ashhadu wa ashhadu anna anna muhammadan muhammadan rasulullah rasulullah congratulations my brother welcome to islam thank you thank you alhamdulillah we can have a virtual handshake a virtual hug <laughs> you have made, you have this pump yes brother you have made the best decision of your life this is just priceless believe me i'm i'm crying inside outside this is the best decision you have protected yourself from the hell fire by allah's mercy now you're heading towards paradise brother david how do you feel what do you have to say no um, i mean I, i feel great like um i just want to move forward you know i want to continue i want to you know build from here and, and hopefully find the right people that can guide me through it and and, and help me learn more you know yes yeah, sir all right and i pray to god that he makes it easy for you and for all of us and i also would like you to pray for me and my family and all of humanity because in the eyes of god you are a pure innocent person what message would you have like suppose if somebody is going to watch this video like two days from now one year from now what message would you have for those people who are in the same situation as you were in what would you tell them well i uh, uh... I think I would tell them the same thing I was trying to tell my girl the other day which is don't be blind take your blindfolds off you know like the only way to to open your eyes is to open your mind you know don't just let culture keep you blind you know like like because of our culture we tend to just 
stay comfortable and I feel like everybody should be wanting and open-minded to, to discover the truth and not just be comfortable with your upbringing, you know, like there's more to the story. Exactly. Exactly. And people may like to know that what questions that you had when you were a Catholic, correct? That uh, now Islam, when you looked into it, you found the answers. What can, what were some of the specific questions you had? Well, um, a lot was to do with, with Jesus and, and, and what he represented and how like we humans have through time elevated him as a human and a prophet until God status, which I always had a problem with that to kind of like understanding everything. And, and, you know, it's, it's kind of been clear to me and then, you know, through how you broke down the whole prophets and what they represented and how they derailed from the path and how Muhammad came down to try to gather everybody up and then, you know, bring them back into faith. And, and I feel like even nowadays I've heard stories about certain, for example, pastors or whatever that somehow they, they gather, they get a gathering of people and, and, almost to the point where almost building a new religion. And I feel like how I've heard and heard stories about humans nowadays that that's happened to, right? I, I could see where we might have gotten sidetracked when Jesus was coming up and trying to guide the people to, you know, to worship God. And, and, and he never said, worship me. And, and, you know, I understand how sometimes we may feel comfortable with how a person speaks and, and want to really, we gravitate to them, but to put them in a godly status, I don't know if, if that's how God really wanted it to be. And I don't even think that was Jesus' message, really. Like, you know, I don't think he was looking for creating a new religion or a new faith or, you know, we have misinterpreted the whole message, I feel like. You're right. You're right. Uh, you know, to begin with, the Bible is not in the same form as was the original and even the interpretation that people have made people have inserted their own uh, thoughts inside the bible their own writings inside the bible so people have literally you know altered and corrupted the bible so for that reason monotheism is now diluted and the original uh, message of jesus is now been uh, you know altered to reflect a triune concept so for that reason, it's important, you know, I say to my Christian brothers and sisters that if you want to know what Islam is, if you want to know who Jesus was, his message, you have to look into Islam. You have to look into the Quran. Quran clarifies to people who Jesus was and who he was not. Right. If he was doing miracles, it's not because of he was divine. No, he was not divine. Only Allah, God is divine, but he is doing miracles through Jesus and Moses and other prophets. Don't raise Jesus up to God. God is God and creation is creation. There is a separation. So, I mean, now you know better by Allah's help. Now you should share that message, you know, starting with your immediate family. Yeah. And then to us. So we also conduct many classes. We also conduct many training classes. You know, I do it and others do it too. I want you to also join in those classes, Brother David, so you can get more answers to the questions people may be asking, the misconceptions that they may have, they're all over the place. Right. So once we get the answers, my desire is for you to become a speaker, a person sharing the faith on the YouTube or side of YouTube, a um, scholar of Islam, an ambassador of Islam, right? That's how my, that's my uh, wish and hope for you. You're an eloquent person. You are a person who thinks, a sincere person, and these are good qualities of a of a dynamic Muslim who is there to share the message and share peace with people. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I appreciate you and everything you've done because just like I know you've touched me and, and kind of like opened my eyes and a lot of things, I could see how it's working with a lot of people that come across the videos and everything. And, and I feel like it's a message that should have been out a long time ago. You know, and I think that because it hadn't is, you know, 
not that it cannot change because obviously you're making a change yourself. But, you know, I feel like we would have, if we would have understood the religion and what is based upon the faith and, 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 you know, and the peacefulness and, and the whole message of what it represents to be in a Muslim. And, and I feel like people would, would think twice to judge by what we get feed on, on the internet or, you know, on the media and everything like that. I think we'll kind of like question things more. And, and, and right now, a lot of people that don't know, they just take the first thing they hear and, and judge everything, you know, the whole faith. And, and I don't think it should be like that, but thanks to you. And, and hopefully a lot more like you will come around and, and, and spread the word and, you know, make people enlighten people a little more about what it really means you know, Islam and, and to be a Muslim. Right, right. I mean, obviously we thank Allah for the knowledge, the blessing and the honor he has given to us. Yes, and sir. obviously we have an obligation to live Islam, to understand and to share Islam. So I'm doing, others are doing, and we only hope and pray that may Allah accept it from us. And I want you to join the team and make videos in Hispanic language, English language, right? Allah has, God has given you talents and blessings. Let's join together, Brother David for the same purpose, to please God and to serve humanity. All right, so again, welcome to Islam. I'm so excited for you. I'll wait for your email to give me that info, then we will get you that welcome to Islam package and go from there. Any last words, Brother David? No, just thank you. I appreciate everything you've done and everything you do. And, you know, God bless you and your family. And, and I'm happy to be Muslim and, you know, and, 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 and to be able to follow the faith and, and, and hopefully I'll continue to learn. May Allah help you in this and make it easy for you so you can inshallah learn Islam and share the message of Islam. With that, my brother, assalamu alaikum, peace of God be upon you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome.